This video is brought to you by Avoto, a professional AI photo editor that lets you perform routine tasks quickly and sync your edits with other photos in just seconds. When I got my first set of lights in 1998, or maybe it was 1999, I started off with two 75 centimeter or 30 inch umbrellas. Back then I used them for environmental portraits on location. One umbrella illuminated the room and the other one lit up the person's face. This simple approach marked the beginning of my lighting journey. And even after 25 years, I still use umbrellas and I probably have one with me on almost every shoot. In this video today, I'm going to share with you how umbrellas differ by comparing images from a recent test shoot. And then I'm going to share with you three ways that you can use umbrellas for years to come. Umbrellas primarily come in two varieties, shallow and deep. Shallow umbrellas are said to produce soft light with widespread distribution. On the other hand, deep umbrellas are said to create more focused, high contrast light, making them perfect for beauty and portraits. Each type has three variants, translucent, white, and silver. And all of them are ideal for quick setups. I personally like to have more contrast in my images, so I currently use the deep variety. In today's test with our model Colleen, I'm going to be using three Elinchrome 105 centimeter or 41 inch deep umbrellas and two diffusers. I think it's safe to assume that similar umbrellas with a similar shape from different brands are going to work substantially the same. Elinchrome did provide me with some of the gear that I'm using today and I have written about this topic for their website, but they did not pay me to make this video and they don't have any editorial control over the content. If you'd like to help support me to make more videos like this, it would be great if you could click on the links in the description and on screen and check out the gear that I'm using today. Also, if you could please like and subscribe and sign up for the bell, that would be great too. I'm probably going to hit 50,000 subscribers this week. And so I also want to thank you for your support over the last four years as I've been making videos for this channel. I created this first image with Ellen Crumb's deep translucent umbrella coupled with a black diffuser on the back. I use this modifier as a shoot through umbrella. The purpose of this cover was to prevent light from bouncing off the interior of the umbrella and then reflecting off of the other surfaces in the room. When light bounces off of colored surfaces, it takes on the color of those objects. So having more control over your lighting is essential when creating color images. Also, uncontrolled light bouncing off of the walls and the ceiling and the floor is possibly going to reduce the contrast in your images. So using a black cover like this is going to be a good idea when you're using a shoot through umbrella. The light from this modifier is similar to what you would expect from a softbox. And you'll notice that the transition areas between the shadows into the midtones is very subtle I actually expected the light from this modifier to look rather cheap, given the fact that this is usually a very basic modifier that goes into entry level kits. And so that was my bias going into things. But as you can see from the results, this image looks really legit. And so the quality from this modifier is quite good. Moving on to the deep white umbrella, the light has less specularity and a touch more warmth. Adding a translucent diffuser to the deep white umbrella creates an indirect softbox effect, warming the light, reducing specularity, and smoothing the transitions even more. For the fourth test, we used the deep silver umbrella, which produced crisper light than the white version. With increased contrast, you get more specularity and texture, but the background in this image is darker, producing a more focused feel. Finally, we tested the deep silver umbrella with the translucent diffuser. This light seemed to have the same specularity and detail as the white umbrella with the diffuser, but it retained the contrast of the silver umbrella. I also had a second light with a double CTO gel inside this antique Mole Richardson 412, which is a 2K movie light. It's responsible for creating the edge light on her hair and shoulder, but because the power was extremely low and the use of this light is the same in each image, it doesn't distract from our comparison. I also used high speed sync on this image so I could shoot at F2 for artistic effect. This photo was my favorite image from the shoot. It was lit with the deep silver umbrella and the diffuser. And here's what it looks like retouched with a Voto. 
The whole process took me less than two minutes. The program allows you to quickly retouch the skin, remove flyaways, add contouring, de-wrinkle clothing where needed, and more. Plus, all of your changes can be synced with other photos and saved as a preset so you can finish your editing lightning fast. Please click on the link in the description to claim a special offer from Avoto. And in case you are wondering, I'm being lit right now with the deep silver umbrella and the diffuser above and a Nanlite Compact 200 on minimum power below. This setup was actually born out of a workshop that I was teaching when one of the attendees said that he wanted to create a portrait that looked like it was lit with a small window in a castle. You know, one of those holes that they shoot arrows out of? You know, Game of Thrones was very popular at the time. Inspired by his vision, I created this image of fellow photographer Jerry Stevens. However, I can't take credit for his impeccable retouching, so please check out his work as well, which I will link to below. I lit this image using a single light in an Elenchrome 105 centimeter, 41 inch, deep silver umbrella. I placed it about 1.8 to 2.4 meters, that's six to eight feet, to camera left. And the bottom of the modifier was level with the subject's jaw. Then I flagged the light coming from the umbrella with a V-flat, black side towards Jerry, and a 50 by 75 centimeter or 20 by 30 inch piece of foam core, positioned so that it was overlapping the front edge of the V-flat and high enough so that it was between the subject's shirt and the main light. The resulting black L restricted the light so that it could only strike the front of Jerry's face and not his torso. I enhanced this isolation by having him lean in towards the V-flat. The other wing of the black V-flat blocked the light from hitting the background. Without it, the background would have been brighter than Jerry's face. I added a second V-flat, white side out, on my right for fill. It was close, but not too close, so that I could just bounce enough light in there to get the right amount of detail in the shadows. Working out the positioning of the V-flats and the foam core is fairly easy if you're in a dark room and using a modeling lamp. This image was also inspired by an attendee during a workshop. One of the things that I love during my two-day workshop is when attendees come with ideas that they want to create and we figure it out and execute it right there on the spot. So after we grabbed lunch at a famous Oakland burger joint, a workshop attendee braided the model's hair, applied generous amounts of topsoil, and painted on some leftover ketchup. Then we created this gritty profile portrait with a little bit more of that Game of Thrones flair. We used an Ellen Chrome 105 centimeter, 41 inch deep white umbrella positioned above and behind the model, and it was diffused by layers of smoke created with a hazer. The light likely bounced around the room and filled in the shadows. This image was then finished off by cooling the white balance to 4,800 Kelvin. If you'd like to learn from me in person, I'll be teaching workshops at eight locations across the U.S. this year, and you can find out more information and reserve your spot today at johngress.com workshops. I'll be going to New York. I'll be at my studio in Chicago. Then I'll be going to L.A., followed by Phoenix, I think, then Atlanta and D.C. later in the year, Seattle, and a place yet to be determined. So please go ahead to my website and check that out, and I hope to see you soon. A third way you can utilize your umbrellas is to light a background. Placing a light on either side of the backdrop with one of these modifiers will produce much more even light compared to using a standard reflector. I have probably used umbrellas to light my backdrops 200 times, maybe even more. This is probably the way that you're going to use umbrellas the most during the course of your career. However, I wouldn't recommend using the translucent umbrellas for this role because light might scatter everywhere and hit your subject too. Instead, opt for white or silver umbrellas and position them so that the subject can't see the interior. One more little note, using a white umbrella is going to produce warmer light than a silver umbrella. That's because when light hits white things, it becomes warmer. When it goes through white fabric, it becomes warmer. So keep that in mind when you're making your choice. Also, you can light your background and create a subtle edge light on your subject 
if you angle the umbrella so that the models can barely see a slice of the interior. Using these modifiers this way is simple, efficient, and effective. And really, that's what these modifiers are all about. If you're just starting out building your kit, imagine having two Elenchrome 3s in a backpack, a sling bag with two stands, two deep silver umbrellas, and a white diffuser. You'll be able to light almost anything, whether you're a wedding photographer on the go or a portrait photographer commuting on the subway. The only thing holding you back will be your imagination. As you grow your skills, you might add a third light and a one meter octobox. But regardless, you can't go wrong with umbrellas and you'll be able to use them for decades. If you enjoyed learning from me in this video, you might also want to check out the Academy with John Gress. And I'll be speaking this year at Imaging USA and WPPI. So check that out as well. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Call your mom. And as always, have a great day.